in the book you have like you divide it into three different categories you have your unionist internationals you have your secessionist internationals and you have your conservative internationals and tell us a little bit about these three different categories and how how you came up with them or whether these individuals who you place in these categories actually thought of themselves in this kind of fashion yeah, as I dove deeper into the sources, I found that not only were Southerners drawing comparisons between the South and European nationalist movements, but they were actually using different kinds of comparisons to express their beliefs about how the South fit into this larger international community of nations, these 19th century debates about the meaning of nationhood. So on the one hand, we have the secessionist perspectives, and certainly they saw themselves as secessionists, and they're the ones who are drawing comparisons with nationalist movements abroad to try and legitimize the Confederacy. And there are actually a couple different ways they were doing that. So in what I call the liberal international perspective, these secessionists and Confederates are claiming that this confederacy and secession are legitimate because they follow in the footsteps of liberal nationalist movements in Europe. So they're not necessarily using the word liberal, but certainly we understand liberalism as based on these ideas of self-government, rights, self-determination. And those were the values that the, this liberal international perspective claimed the South was emulating from nations abroad. So they're saying, we, the South, just like Italy, Ireland, Hungary, et cetera, represent these legitimate national values of self-government and national self-determination. On the other hand, we also have a conservative secessionist perspective that's claiming that the South doesn't follow in the footsteps of these nationalist movements abroad, it does better than they did. So this is based on the reality that most of the nationalist movements abroad failed and the conservative secessionist perspective claims they failed because they were too liberal. They tried to give too many rights to too many people. So the conservative, pers conservative international perspective says, we're gonna solve that problem. We're gonna purify nationalism with slavery and with conservatism, such as our, their interpretation of slavery. So secessionists and Confederates are really developing a couple different ways to situate the Confederacy within this international context, both ways though claiming legitimacy. But of course, not all white Southerners were secessionist or Confederate, and so Southern Unionists were also using international perspectives, which I think really speaks to how widespread these ideas and this international context was. And the Unionists are claiming that when you look to Europe, you see new nations like Italy that united and they're strong and they can protect people's rights. Whereas you look at divided nations like Poland and Germany, they're weak they fail to protect people's rights. So for Southern Unionists, European examples taught unity is how you protect national values, division is how you destroy them and create tyranny. So from all these different perspectives then, white Southerners are using these international perspectives to really clarify what their idea of Southern nationalism is and to legitimize their vision of the Southern nation.